Hello everybody, it's Ed here from metricmogul.co.uk giving you some GA, GTM and data layer tips. So today I wanted to talk about something which um, a lot of people want to do and that is around tracking conversions, but not conversions as in macro conversions, but micro conversions. And by micro conversions, I mean things that may give you information about a person on their way to become to becoming a purchaser, let's say. So let me give you a very concrete example on this fake food site. Now let's say that the um, you know we sell products here. We've got pasta bake, roast chicken, sausage and mash. It's only three on this example site, but I want you to imagine that this is a big food site with loads of different products, food products for sale. And your marketing manager comes to you and says, "Look, Ed, I want to um, I want to be able to fire." I want to be able to remarket to these people on AdWords. So I want you to fire a AdWords conversion tag. Whenever someone views, um, <clears throat> well, let's say I want to, I want to fire, um, I want to remarket to people who love meat. All right, let's make it that. I want to remarket to people who enjoy eating meat. So I want to try and get rid of vegetarians. We're going to target them in a different way. But this month, I want to target people who like meat. So you go when you think to yourself, all right, so how are we going to do this using Google Tag Manager, Google Analytics and AdWords? All right. So the basic steps here are going to be as follows. First of all, I'm going to create a data layer and the data layer is going to tell me um, information about the product someone is viewing. So some, when someone goes on to the roast chicken, for example, I need to know is this a meat product or is it a vegetarian product? So I'm gonna have in the data layer a, var a variable that says contains meat and that is gonna be set to either true or false depending whether the product contains meat or not. All right, so that's gonna be step one. Step two <clears throat> is obviously we get the developers to implement the data layer, all well and good. We can't do anything about that, they have to get on with their job. Step three, we are going to um, create a trigger in Google Tag Manager that says if the variable um, if the variable on the page that contains meat says true then I want you to fire this particular AdWords tag okay so there's the premise uh, the marketing manager wants us to uh, retarget people who like meat and as a proxy for liking meat we're going to assume that people who look at meat products like meat and therefore we're going to retarget them all right, guys, so I've logged into AdWords. I'm going to go to Shared Library Audiences, and I'm going to create a new remarketing list here. And the marketing list is going to be called Likes Meat. And I want to add people um, on the page with a specific tag. Uh, I don't have any tags listed yet, but I'm going to have a new tag added here. And uh, it's going to last 30 days. And there we go. There is our remarketing tag. Now I'm just going to um, paste that into a text editor. So I've got the values and the things I'm looking for here are the conversion ID and the conversion label. So head back into Google Tag Manager and I'm going to create a remarketing tag right here. And a conversion ID. Ooh, it's not what we want. The conversion ID is that bit. Stick that in there. And the conversion label is that one. And uh, I'm gonna call this, as as before I use my, my naming convention, which is three letter codes, AdWords conversion, and this is gonna be likes meat. Okay, now trigger, we're gonna leave for a second. Um, we'll come back to that. And we're just gonna save that tag. Perfect. All right, let's now um, create the data layer. All right, so first up, I'm going to use data layer doctor and I'm going to uh, give my site a name, which is Foodio. And I'm going to start with a minimal site. And first of all, I need some variables. So let's get rid of this one. I'm going to create a variable called likes meat. Oh no, contains meat. That was it, contains meat. And um, the values can be are true or false, yes, no, but um, keep it simple, let's do yes or no. Makes it easier to read. And um, I'm gonna create one called page type as well. I do like one called page type and the value 
uh, can be something like product. So save that. And then we're going to create a page. The home page, obviously, we don't need, but we're going to create a page called product. And I'm going to assign contains me and page type like so. So there we go. We've got our data there very quickly. Now, I so I'm going to save that. Right, so now I'm going to head over to, um, this is the part where you'd give this to your developers and you'd say, all right, put this on every product page. Um, and if it contains meat, meat, set this to yes. And if it contains doesn't contain meat, set it to no. Um, I'm going to show you roughly what the developers would do. So here is the code for my fake site. And I've got three products as shown on the site. All right, so the first one, product one, is the pasta bake. Now, obviously, uh, well, in this case, I'm going to assume that the pasta bake is vegetarian. Um, so here's my Google Tag Manager code. Data layer goes right above it and contains meat. No, it doesn't contain meat because it's vegetarian. And um, But it is a product page. All right, so there is my first data layer on the page. Copy and paste. The next two products, ooh, um, roast chicken, sausage and mash, they definitely do contain meat. So again, in goes the data layer. Now your devs will be much more sophisticated in doing this. They will have um, page templates, so they would only have to add it to one product page and, and they would inject these variables dynamically. But for the sake of this demonstration, I'm gonna show you how it would have come across manually. And finally, uh, we need a data layer on the home page as well. Um, in this case, contains meat. Uh, no, it's not really relevant and also home. So I'm gonna just delete that because it's not applicable to this page. All right, so there we go. What does this look like? I'm gonna refresh the page. I am going to uh, view the page source. Ooh. No, I'm not, I'm gonna inspect. And um, in the console, I'm just gonna run data layer. Data, can I spell? All right, object, 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 here we go. The first object here, page type home. Now let's go into the pasta bake. There we go. Now my data layer says, Contains meat, no, page type products, that's absolutely fine. And the final one, not the final one, but one of the meat ones. Contains meat, yes, page type product, perfect. All right, next up, we want to create some variables in GTM to pick up those values. So again, using my naming convention, DL stands for data layer. You don't have to use this convention, but I like it. And page type. And this is gonna pick up from the data layer variable and it's gonna pick up page type. Standard, all right, next one, DL dot contains meat. Data layer variable, contain, oops, contains meat, done, done, done. All right, so to check this is working, I'm gonna hit the preview button. Wait for that to load. I can shut this down now and then I'm going to reload my page and hopefully we'll get a little pop-up menu. Head over to the data layer window um, and you can see there is my data layer being picked up and if I go into the variables tab you will see contains meat, our contains meat variable in GTM is set to yes, page type set to product. All working fine. Now let's go back home. Let's have a look at the variables. Home contains meat undefined. That's what we wanted. And now let's have a look at the pasta bake. This should say contains meat, no, contains meat, no. Perfect, so our data layer is in place to do the analysis. Right, so what next? Now we have to pick up, uh, we have to set a, a trigger basically, which says if contains meat is yes, then you're gonna do this shit, otherwise you're gonna do nothing. So let's set up that trigger right now. Uh, we're going to come in here. Uh, doo -doo 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 -doo. Ooh. We're going to do page view. Some page views. Contains meat equals yes. And again, um, I've got a little naming convention. I used I like to start them with either P if it refers to a page view or E if it re refers to some kind of event that's happened. This is just going to happen when someone views a page. So I'm going to call it P and um, 
I'm going to call it product contains meat. <clears throat> now, obviously, um, contains meat equals yes. Perfect. Save that. There we go. Go back to our tags. And uh, we've got our AdWords remarketing tag here. And I'm just going to select the trigger, contains meat, save that. And let's have a little preview. All right, so let's refresh this page. Here you can see we have the GA base tag fired, but the likes meat remarketing tag is not firing. Why? Because this product does not contain meat. How does GTM know it doesn't contain meat? Because the variable contains meat is no. And that variable we put and pulled out of the data layer. Now let's have a look at a product such as sausage and mash. Oh, it's making me hungry just looking at this. There we go. Uh, oh, now you see, there's something wrong here. Um, the geo base tag is not firing and neither is the likes meat. Oh, there we go. I was on the wrong thing. Sorry, I should have been on summary. My fault. You can see the AdWords likes meat tag did fire. And why did it fire? Because DL contains meat was yes. So there we have it. Very quickly, I've created a, uh, an AdWords remarketing campaign for people who like meat. Now you're probably wondering, um, well, th this is a bit of a silly way to do it. You could have just, for example, if I know product two contains meat, uh, rather than create the trigger that I had, you could have done, this is what you could have done, you could have gone, um, well, if it's a page view and the page view, uh, page path contains that, there we go, fire on that. And, um, oh, we can't do, you can't do an all, but you could have, you, basically you could have a trigger for each product and attach those all to the tag, but obviously that's a, that's a complete waste of time and takes ages. Um, so this is a much simpler way of doing it in a much quicker, quicker way. So I hope that made sense. Hope it was helpful. Um, let me know what you think in the comments.